Hello everyone, welcome to the Starward Initiative, and we're back for another look at Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. This time we're going to start with the subclasses, and we're starting with College of Spirits Bard. We like the subclass, and they made a lot of changes since it was in playtest and on Arth Arcana. So let's take a look and see what they have. Uh, Bards of the College of Spirits seek tales with inherent power, be they legends, histories, or fictions, and bring their subjects to life. Using occult trappings, these bards conjure spiritual embodiments of powerful forces to change the world once more. Such spirits are capricious, though, and what a bard summons isn't always entirely under their control. Very cool, very cool. Uh, our first feature at third level is Guiding Whispers. You can reach out to spirits to guide you and others. You learn the Guidance Cantrip, which doesn't count against the number of bard cantrips you know. For you, it has a range of 60 feet when you cast it. Uh, this is really cool and very useful all around. Um, having the Guidance Cantrip is great to begin with, uh, you know, whenever possible, and you don't really have any other specific purpose for cantrips, grab Guidance because it is universally useful. Um, this gives you, you know, Guidance is normally a touch spell, this gives you a 60 foot Guidance, which is phenomenal. And there was something similar to this before, um, Riot. Riot Games, who does uh, League of Legends and Legends of Runeterra. Uh, Legends of Runeterra, uh, it's like the League of Legends card game. Still play it today, woot woot. Um, but it, they did a crossover with D&D &D Beyond, and they came out with a whole like little mini event thing, and that had subclasses. And one of the subclasses was the Wild Card Rogue. Let me know if you remember that. Um, the Wild Card Rogue was, um, it gave the Rogue guidance at third level as well. Uh, but it was still a touch touch spell. Um, that rogue, though, at ninth level, got the guidance up to 30 feet and could use it as a bonus action. So this is very similar in that it um, gives you guidance and then boosts it, boosts the range on it, which is very nice. And though that one was only 30 feet, you could do it as a bonus action. This one is still going to take you an action to use, but it's a ranged guidance. Oh, yeah, beautiful utility. Next up at third level, we have Spiritual Focus. You employ tools that aid you in channeling spirits, be they historical figures or fictional archetypes. You can use the following objects as a spellcasting focus for your bard spells. A candle, crystal ball, skull, spirit board, or taraka deck. So, Ouija board, tarot deck, all that jazz. Um, starting at sixth level, you can cast a bard spell that deals, when you cast a bard spell that deals uh, deals damage or restores hit points through the Spiritual Focus, roll a d6, and you regain a bonus. You gain a bonus to one damage or healing roll of the spell equal to the number rolled. Great, so we have a, a very useful, um, the first feature is very useful with the Guidance, and now we have a boost to healing and damage. Both things that most bards like. Um, bards don't have a ton of healing spells, but heck, come on, a healing word with an extra with an extra d6 on it? Mmm, take that all day. Very good. Very good. Both features, very good. Uh, our main feature here is Tales from Beyond. You reach out to spirits who tell their tales through you. While you're holding your spiritual focus, you can use a bonus action to expend one use of your bardic inspiration and roll on the spirits table using your bardic inspiration die to determine the tale the spirits direct you to tell. You retain the tale in mind until you bestow the tale's effect or you finish a short or long rest. There's some details here we have to go over them. You can use an action to choose one creature you can see within 30 feet of you. This can be you and to be the, the target of the tale's effect. It's very nicely put, this can be you. Once you do so, you can't bestow the tale's effect again until you roll it again. You can retain only one of these tales in mind at a time and rolling on the spirit tales table immediately ends the effect of the previous tale. If the tale requires a saving throw, the DC equals your spell save DC. Huh, that was a that was a mouthful. Things to keep in mind here. So Bardic Inspiration by default, the regular Bardic Inspiration given to you by the Bard class. Um, it is a D6, it starts out as a D6, and it scales up to D12. Uh, it only requires a bonus action to give it to someone. Right? If you just give somebody uh, inspiration, bark inspiration, boom, it's done. As a bonus action, you give it to them, and then they use it when they make a particular roll. This, however, you use a bonus action to hear this tale from the spirits, to, to essentially like um, 
put this tale in, in a pool of energy in you, okay? You hear this tale, and when you retell it, you need to use an action to retell it. So this is going to take you more action economy to use, but you, when you store it with the bonus action, you will know what the tale is, so you will know the appropriate time to use your action to let it out. Um, so instead of, if you're just, if you just want to give inspiration to someone and you're not looking for these special effects and you want it to be quick, just, you always have that bardic inspiration use, the, the defaulted bonus action use. So you can do that. You don't have to use this all the time, but just, just to let you know, this is more on the action economy. Some other things to consider here is that, um, this tale that you learn that you can keep in mind to give to someone or to use on yourself or an enemy because there are some offensive ones here um the, it will go away when you take a short rest so if you're short resting a lot if you're hanging out with the warlock and he needs to short rest every 20 minutes um the the uh you know the that's going to go away whatever tail you have uh, already loaded and ready to go will go away and the range on this by default is 30 feet so cool um just just giving you some things to think about there because uh, some of these like some, these little the minutiae here uh can get you caught up in the action economy uh let's see here yes and when you you can't when you roll on the table whatever you have whatever tail you have loaded goes away so that's cool that you can just override it and keep going but anywho i know I'm talking about it in a very mechanical way but but thematically these are really really cool so here's the tails table um, so the first six here are going to be what you get at third level when you get the subclass because your your uh, Bardic Inspiration die is still the D6 until fifth level when it goes up to a D8. And then uh, D10 at 10th uh, level, uh, so every five levels, a D10 at 10th level, and then a D12 at 15th. Uh, so first up here we have number one, Tale of the Clever Animal. And I do have the old, um, the from last year, the Unearthed Arcana on the Spirit Bard and the College of Spirits Bard here, because there were quite a bit of changes, and I wanted to see what all they changed. I did glance over that. Uh, I'm not going to keep jumping back and forth too much, because it is a little, probably a little bit jarring, as the everything doesn't line up the same as, as it does. But I just have it in a separate tab. Meh. You know, reference material. So uh, right here we have Tale of the Clever Animal. For the next 10 minutes, whenever the target makes an intelligence, a wisdom, or a charisma check, the target can roll an extra die immediately after rolling the d20 and add the extra die's number to the check. The extra die is the same type as your Bardic Inspiration die. So basically giving you that, that boost for any of those checks, which are... Um, how do I put it? Which are things like insight, uh, investigation, persuasion, stuff like that. So very cool, very cool. Kind of, kind of basic, but hey, it's the first one we're getting. We're getting ramped up here. The second one is Tale of the Renowned Duelist. You make a melee spell attack against the target. On on a hit, the target takes force damage equal to two rolls of your Bardic Inspiration die plus your Charisma modifier. So remember, these are by default a range of thirty feet. Uh, the fact that it's called a melee spell attack without explaining it is a little confusing. Though, when you read the Unearthed Arcana one, the original version, which um, which the Unearthed Arcana ones of all these gave a very, a lot more flavorful description, whereas in Van Richten's it's more, just tells you the mechanical with a little bit of a tagline. Um, it made more sense when, like right here, and you make a melee spell attack and the and as the warrior briefly appears next, like within five feet of them. So there it explains to you like how it's going to manifest thematically. Right now where we're here, it's, you know, you have to come up with this yourself, which is fine. It just was a little confusing at reading for the first time, remembering that, wait a second, this has, you know, okay, cool. So anyway, this is a, this is nice. This is a very good scaling attack. Essentially, when you get this at third level, and if you come up on the Renowned Duelist, you are essentially a um, and a bard that is hitting with a 30-foot range uh, greatsword attack, because it's going to be 2d6 plus your charisma modifier, and so that's great. It's decent damage. Not bad. Um, but that also scales. For one, it's force damage, which is great. Very little, if anything, is resistant to or immune to force damage. Though, yeah, I mean, if you play in some of my campaigns, I think mix things up with force damage, you know, make it more powerful or and or make things resistant to it. 
interesting stuff. So um, the but that scales up to two d12 plus your charisma modifier uh, late game. So that's pretty cool. That's essentially like your your spirit warrior dude is dual wielding great axes and hitting. Um, wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Not the most powerful thing in the world late game, but it is impressive. It is a very impressive early game. And next up, and by the way, that, that that's a bard doing that. So as far as impressive damage, you're not really there for that, but it does help. Um, third level, Tale of the Beloved Friends. The target and another creature of its choice it can see within five feet of it gains temporary hit points equal to a roll of your bardic inspiration die plus your charisma modifier. This is the one that was broken. This, oh, I mean, some of them needed tweaked, but this was broken in the Unearthed Arcana in playtest. Thank you, Wizards of the Coast, for fixing this because it was broken, and I was sad that it was going to make this class just too broken. Um, but but anyway, they, they changed it from healing to temp hit points because there was a feature in the in playtest that allowed you, uh, later on in a higher level, allowed you to roll a d6 and just keep change it to whatever you want for this. So essentially always have one of these loaded. And you could do it with healing. So it was an infinite loop, loop of healing. Um, right now they tempered that with temporary hit points, which is nice. It hits two targets. Very cool. Um, yeah, two targets, temp hit points, Bardic Inspiration. So a D6 plus your Charisma mod when you get this. Scales up to D12 plus Charisma. This is great. So it starts out almost as good as two, um, two Cure Wounds at range. And but it's temp hit points, so it's not technically healing, but hey, I don't care. Super useful. I like it. Let's move on. Next is Tail of the Runaway. The target can immediately use its reaction to teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space it can see. When the target teleports, it can choose a number of creatures it can see within 30 feet of it up to your charisma modifier, minimum of zero. I think that was higher before. Yeah, because minimum of zero, I don't, I don't. That doesn't ring a bell. But uh, to immediately use the same reaction. If you're a bard and your charisma modifier is zero, help you. Help you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is this is cool. This is very useful. Uh, um, very super useful. Sorry, I moved my mic up here because it was like echoing in the videos before. And now it keeps smacking me because it's right here. Um, but it sounds a lot better, I'm sure, than the echoey crap that I had going on before. So this is great. You use your action to have someone use their reaction, which can be you. Oof, the action economy here is a little rough. Um, can be you, but the effects are phenomenal. Up to 30 feet, unoccupied space. You are giving them a misty step that they can use on reaction. And not only that, they can spread it to people around them. They can also use a reaction. To uh, This is one awesome bamf around the battlefield so you can like if your party is relatively close you can theoretically get everybody to poof, poof, like switch positions right um go to different spots on on the battlefield and yeah it's wonderful very powerful wonderful i'm glad this is this is early you get this early on very cool uh, the fifth one is Tail of the Avenger. For one minute, any creature that hits the target with a melee attack takes force damage equal to a roll of your Bardic Inspiration die. This is really cool. You can put this on your tank who's pulling aggro away from the rest of your party, and as they're trying to pummel him, he's dishing out damage, or the Avenger spirit uh, is dishing out damage to them as they are hitting him. Uh, very cool, very cool. And it's force damage, and it scales because it scales with your your bardic inspiration die. I like it. These are just great, and I just can't I can't wait to um, have players that use these, and I can't wait to use them myself. Next up is the sixth one, Tale of the Traveler. The target gains temporary hit points equal to a roll of your bardic inspiration die plus your bard level. While it has these temporary hit points, the target's walking speed increases by ten feet, and it gains plus one bonus to its AC. Uh, the Unearthed Arcana, it didn't have the bonus to the AC, so it got buffed, which is nice. And it is a lot higher temp hit points than what the, the Friends one, the Beloved Friends one had, but that is also in trade-off of it's doing it to one target. But they are getting a lot of temp hit points, they are getting a movement speed boost and an AC boost. Very cool. That's the last one on our D6, right? That's what Those are the six that you get right out the, right out the gate at third level when you get these features. Um, very cool. So now let's move on to our seventh one, Tale of the Beguiler. 
The target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take psychic damage equal to two rolls of your bardic inspiration die, and the target is incapacitated until the end of its next turn. Yay, we have another 2d6, or not 2d6, I'm sorry, two bardic inspiration die rolls, which start at d6, though when you're when you're yeah that that won't be a d6 this will be a d8 once that's right once you get access to this so 2d8 it, it starts at 2d8 and um you don't add your modifier to this do you nope okay so just 2d8 psychic damage which is nice so most things aren't resistant to psychic damage um and incapacitated super powerful incapacitated till the end of their next turn no um there is no save or suck I mean, it is saber suck. There is no half damage. There we go. They don't take half damage if they pass the check. It is just straight. Uh, it happens or it doesn't. So that's that. That can be a little iffy sometimes. But um, but the effects are great. Taking psychic damage and being incapacitated. That is essentially taking them out of the fight and allowing your party to wail on them until the end of their next turn. Uh, very cool. And it doesn't say incapacitated until like someone hits them it is just straight up out very cool uh number eight is tail of the phantom the target becomes invisible until the end of its next turn or until it hits a creature with an attack if the target hits a creature with an attack during the invisibility the creature it hits takes necrotic damage equal to a roll of your bardic inspiration die and is frightened of the target until the end of the frightened creature's next turn this is great because you can turn yourself invisible or you can turn one of your allies invisible. And not only that, they're creeping around invisible. And then the first time they unleash an attack, it does additional necrotic damage. And it um, and it frightens automatically as, as part of the attack, as long as it's successful. Um, and it frightens their target. And it, the, the target is frightened of them. So like this phantom you're giving is kind of hanging out and uh, keeping your ally invisible, and then pops out, does the damage, and then sticks around to f uh, further frighten the, tar uh, the target of your ally. So very cool. Uh, the ninth one is Tail of the Brute. I think this was a giant before. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was giant. Um, each creature of the target's choice you can see within 30 feet of it must make a dry mouth check. <laughs> must, must make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, a creature takes thunder damage equal to three rolls of your bardic inspiration die and is knocked prone. A creature that succeeds on the saving throw takes half as much damage and isn't knocked prone. Okay, um, so by the way, now we're moving up to the D10, right? So now we're moving up to uh, 10th level? Yeah, 10th level. So at 10th level, you have access to, to Tales, Tale of the Brute. Um, but <laughs> it is worth the wait because... Um, three rolls of your bardic inspiration die at this at 3d10 damage no modifier in there unfortunately but 3d10 damage and is knocked prone it's an aoe 30 feet of their choice not not everything around them in 30 feet of their choice and is knocked prone wow that's that's fantastic this is all from a bardic inspiration die mind you um so 30 feet knocked prone, and they take half damage if um, if they pass. Fantastic. Tail the Brute, cheers. So much talking. Why the hell do I talk so much? Okay, next up, tenth one, is Tail of the Dragon. Not Return of the Dragon. That's a different one. Uh, Tail of the Dragon. The target spews fire from the, from the mouth in a 30-foot cone. Each creature in that area must make a uh, dexterity saving throw, taking fire damage equal to four rolls of the Bardic Inspiration die on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. So we don't have any of the other crazy effects like we have with the Knocking Prone, but we gain an additional Bardic Inspiration, an additional D10 at this point, ah, which will go up to a D12. Um, so an additional D10, and it is a huge 30-foot cone. Look at a battle map sometime and map out a 30-foot cone. That is huge, huge. So uh, the only thing is that you have to be careful where you aim it because that's each creature in that area, not just the ones you choose. Let me actually look at my camera. Okay, I'm going to try to slap the mic into view. All right, cool. Now the 11th one. Now we're up to the D12. We are now at 15th level. Tail the Angel. The target regains hit points equal to two rolls of your Bardic Inspiration die plus your Charisma modifier, and you and one condition from the following 
lists of effects. Blinded, deafened, paralyzed, petrified, or poisoned. Those are some pretty brutal effects, especially paralyzed, petrified. Ew, par petrified is awful. This is great. This now solidifies you as being able to um, be able to, to, to do things like uh, greater restoration. I think, I don't, yeah, less restoration doesn't do it. Uh, like greater restoration and stuff uh, to, to get rid of petrification. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on the lesser restoration thing, but I think it's greater that does it. And, and similar uh, similar abilities and features can do it. But yeah, this this you can cure status effects and do a pretty decent healing. This is 2d12 healing plus your charisma modifier. Pretty cool. Our last one is Tale of the Mindbender. You evoke an incomprehensible fable from an otherworldly being. The target must succeed on an intelligence saving throw or take psychic damage equal to three rolls of your Bardic Inspiration die, so 3d12, and be stunned till the end of the next turn. Um, okay. That's not a huge step up from incapacitated. Where are we at? Beguiler? So Beguiler was two rolls. Okay. This is okay, I guess this is going to be significantly more damage because Beguiler was at seven. So you get Beguiler when you start doing a D eight. And this is guaranteed a D twelve because you can't do this unless you have a D twelve. So Okay. So that's going to be significantly more damage. I'm just just curious there, because they only add you only added a die. But um yeah, but with bigger dice comes bigger responsibility to mess shit up. Good stuff. Um, very cool. Not a huge step up from the other one though, not a uh, great changes but it is um it is stunned essentially out of the fight like the incapacitated and three rolls of damage very nice way to lock a big bad down um very cool so this is just a description of the spirit tales basically saying that you can kind of theme this however you like right however you're getting these tales whatever spirits are coming to you you get to choose this in any any fashion that you like after we go over all that, and then I read it. Uh, so at six level, that's all third level. Hey, it's all third level. Six level, we get spirit session. Uh, spirits provide you with supernatural insights. You can conduct an hour long ritual, channeling spirits, which can be done during a short or long rest, using your spiritual focus. You can conduct the ritual with a number of willing creatures equal to your proficiency bonus, including yourself. At the end of the ritual, you, you temporarily learn uh, one spell of your choice from any class. Cool. The spell you choose must be a, of a level equal to the number of creatures that conducted the ritual or less. The spell must be of a level you can cast, and it must be of a school of divination or necromancy. Ah, see, we're, we're getting into specifics here. The chosen spell counts as a bard spell for you, but doesn't count against the number of bard spells you know. Once you perform the ritual, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest, and you know the chosen spell until you start a long rest. So if your long rest gets interrupted, gets interrupted poof it's gone but this is cool it is a we get a free spell it's it's on a scaling amount so this is a essentially a lesser uh, magical secrets because you have to have specific schools it has to be of a bleh, specific level that does scale with the amount of people um that are doing this with you but that all oh, that scales on your proficiency bonus right yep okay um so scaling on your proficiency bonus pretty cool pretty cool not mind-blowing but pretty cool. So you do a seance. You know, what's a seance every long rest between friends? Uh, next up is Mystical Connection. Uh, 14th level, you now have the ability to nudge the spirits of the Tales Beyond toward certain tales. Whenever you roll on the Spirit Tales table, you can roll the die twice and choose which of the two effects to bestow. If you roll the same number on both dice, you can ignore the number and choose any effect on the table. So this is where the, when I said about the infinite loop, um, this used to be, I think, something like you uh, keep rolling, you can keep rolling a d6, you can choose to use a d6, uh, right there, yeah, Tales from Beyond, you can roll a d6 and use it instead of expending a bardic inspiration die. So, um, yeah, that I'm glad they changed that because that was broken. I didn't mind the d6 thing, as long as you could infinitely heal. I thought that was okay. I don't necessarily think they needed to change that, though it, I believe it would bog down gameplay, right? Um, I would just tell my player, just choose, right? Just <laughs> We're not going to sit here and just keep rolling the D6 until you get what you want. Just choose. Though this one does does give you a, basically advantage on the Tails roll, and then if they're both the same, Snake Eyes, uh, if they're both the same, uh, same roll, then you get to pick. 
That's fair. I like it. I like the compromise. They 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 met in a good spot. Ah, that's lots of talking. So let me know what you think about uh, about the College of Spirits. I really like this bard. I can't wait to see it in action, both on both sides of the DM screen. And um, yeah, let me know what you think about it and anything I might have missed uh, on the, the small changes there. Thank you so much for your time. Um, we're going to be a few days. In a few days, we'll be covering the uh, the Undead Warlock, and yeah, then we'll move on to something, some other part of the book. Van Richten's. Woo! We're going to get it. We're going to get it done uh, a lot quicker this time with this book. So. Thank you for joining me. Uh, until next time, unity is strength. So take care of each other, stay safe, and I'll see you again real soon.